Bonjour. Bonjour. Hello. Hello and welcome to this uh, one hour meeting conversation with our directors uh, from NFB. So I'm introducing myself. My name is Magali Boutin, Chief of Media Relations at NFB, and I'm happy to present uh, in the panel to complete the activity of the um, Black Month. Uh, uh, Black History Month, uh, in collaboration with the uh, Black History Month, uh, I want to introduce uh, the director, Tatiana Zinga Botao, and Valerie Ba, directors of the short film Saul. We will ask a series of questions to the guest filmmakers and open to the question period before the end. Please feel free to comment in the comments section of the NFB YouTube accounts. And uh, in French and English, we have simultaneous translation depending on your language that is being used during the conversation. So I would now like to introduce my colleague Osas, based in Halifax, to present an excerpt and to introduce yourself, Pop. So you have the floor, Osas. My name is Osas Sewekha Smith. I am the NFB publicist for the Atlantic region, as well as Quebec English. And I'm happy to be here with you today. Uh, this session, a couple of housekeeping for this session today, we're going to have a live interpreter, so you can tune in on the NFB's YouTube channel in English and or the French uh, platform as well. Before we get started, we're going to play the uh, a one-minute clip of the film, and, um, and then we'll get right into the conversation Q&A. Thank you, oh, Je me souviens à cette place-là, il y avait une soeur supérieure, elle était malade. Elle avait un cancer. Moi, j'avais un poste de nuit. Et j'ai l'habitude, elle a l'habitude de sonner, je suis habituée d'aller répondre à sa cloche pour voir ce qu'elle voulait, c'est tout ça. Et puis un jour, il fait rentrer une autre préposée, une blanche. Elle me dit, moi je suis pour la soeur Intel aujourd'hui, c'est plus, plus pour elle que je suis là. Dans ma tête, j'ai dit, c'est bizarre. Et puis, j'avais une amie, une blanche, une très bonne personne. Elle m'avait appelé au téléphone et m'a dit, on va te demander de changer cas de travail. Telle soeur qui est malade, quand tu rentres dans sa chambre, là, elle, elle voit le démon. Elle, elle voit un démon. Merci. Donc, Thank you. So this excerpt tells us a lot uh, about uh, the full work of Saul. So let's dive into the answers. To first of all, thank you for being with us today, and to know what does it mean today that theme and uh, from uh, darkness to light, uh, and for NFB, which uh, goes with our mandate. What does it represent uh, to create, to express yourself? Uh, it's the light on the process of uh, creating a work at the NFB. And then we'll dive into the creation of the, from the excerpt that we've just seen with the participants that are uh, with us online today. I hope that you've had online to watch this wonderful piece of work. So to create, to express yourself, uh, light on the process of creating a work at the NFB. So Tatiana, Valérie, who wants it to start? I don't know. I'll start. Well, I need to start by saying that it's by chance that I found myself with the NFB because the first stage of the research, it was Valerie who was leading it. She researched it first of all, and she worked with the NFB, and then she called on me to direct. So it was not necessarily in spite of myself, but I'm very happy, but uh, I'm not the one that contacted the NFB. What I can say, first of all, I never thought I would work with such an organization, but I was not part in the of the creation piece, uh, more in the production. So I think it, it would be more interesting uh, to for Valerie to explain how she uh, connected with them, and then I would c come and, and join in with the NFB. Tatiana, I'll contradict you. Honestly, 
when it's a matter of research, it's not just what's on paper. I think we were talking to the same people. Lati, for instance, Lati Fari, the collective, Kernomad, and to the people that we knew. So, honestly, in the core of the research, I believe that's the concern, the emotional part. And at the stage where we talked about this project of our mutual uh, interest for that theme, you had already done a great deal of work on your side. And I think we just joined our efforts. And if we talk about process since uh, pro from research to production, for me, there's always something like the relationship between the creation and the process. For me, it's as if the final product, let's call it like that, the plus ultra is a process of many things that we live, navigate, and then we try to summarize. And I feel like this project would not have gotten to the end like this if, had it not been for our interactions and the processing that we had. I recall our many conversations uh, on the phone, trying to reflect on the images uh, corresponding emotionally to the theme and to what people, uh, the women were living and are present living. It's that type of thing that it's always a bit erased from the result of uh, from uh, the uh, creation project, but that's part uh, of it. So it's extremely important to have it uh, part make part of it. And yes, and when I talk about a creative, I'm more of a, an actress, so I do a lot of research on the t on the subject. But we are gay guardian angels, but during the pandemic, it had been ongoing for a while. And we were totally floored, Valérie and I, uh, about the treatment that we would do these uh, with those people, uh, the patients and the workers. Uh, we were uh, totally taken aback. And it was like a, a dream, uh, solitary reflections when I met Valérie. It's as if everything became a collective. It went from the dream to the action. The ref method of a, a solitary reflection to, or so from the unconscious to the conscious, or from the inner to the outside. And so it went naturally, it came naturally. All these questions that I had were being asked, and we realized that we had the same series of questions. It was like a dance. So I went from someone who, from another person also that was also living all of this inside and they all came out. Yes, and as you lived it, you realized that the both of you lived it within. Did you think of the scope? And if we uh, are two of us uh, living on that within and create together, let's imagine the scope that we can create, the impact it can have. So did you create exactly to shed light on these guardian angels or to uh, carry your, your words further out, further more, or to pull out what was alive within you? It, I think it's the both because there was a will to truly discuss it it was pandemic, we were not talking, there was no dialogue, a part of the population, uh, there's always uh, people that are supporting uh, and helping, and it was especially the women, uh, black women that were racialized, uh, the, there was also the Asians, but they were always racialized, that were in incredible situations, uh, more that did not even have their papers, so it was incredible, the, the uh, situation that they were into, these women and I'm an actress, so I focused on myself because I was sad or upset with the fact that I could not play and I was not seeing my friends. And really, that's true. That's that was, and so I went into the well. Everything's going to go well with the guardian angels, and so I could see that these people that were working underpaid uh, in a precarious stage uh, and they had no possibility of stopping work if they were 
uh, sick. Some people were working as nurses and they had to go home and handle all of their families as well. So it was a need to claim that uh, I was there because uh, before my my uh, meeting with uh, Valerie, I was I had I knew about politics, but uh, I was not. I was uh, uh, I was submitted. Uh, so there was people that were making films and they were they're not it, it, with the times and so it, they had traveled so it was truly inspiring and so i was keeping that for myself and it is my meeting with her that made me realize this is where i made my first political move thank you tatiana and valerie it's really a wonderful uh, way to bring us to our second question given that we saw the excerpt with the guardian angels and all that tell us about saul Tell us more about the film, Saul. We talked about the process, what brought you to that idea, but the final result, how about it? I feel it was as if when the film came out, I feel like sometimes it's difficult uh, with the chronology of the pandemics. We are still now in the pandemics. The same precarity, the precarious situation that we uh, if observed during the pandemic, they were there before, and it's still the case today. And I believe the work that uh, we were able to make, to do, it still has impact, it's more visible. It's a group of Un unionist uh, activist women, females. They are at once uh, caregivers. They work either in institutions or at home, and they get together to fight for better conditions. And it's 2021. They contacted Tatiana and I to use the film as a type of pretext to uh, get together with the public and to uh, talk openly about their conditions. I was very moved the first time during one of those sessions to take control of the film and to have them talk about the film and to truly sympathize with Roselaine so because how they saw themselves reflected in that woman's experience and they drew conclusions that went way beyond what Tatiana and I had conceptualized. And I'm thinking about the power of the art of cinema to create a third space where people can see themselves to find their the way where they flee i you can see on uh, we saw on instagram somebody who just uh, viewed the film they were giving us a play-by-play -play in real time yes because her mother had gone through similar situation. So yes, in that film with all of the components, it can go beyond our in, uh, original intent and be used as a space where people can reflect on the on the questions, the, the themes, and to their freedom as well. Thank you very much. Very detailed. 
Le play by play est fascinant. And the play by play is fascinating and often is part of the uh, a present debate of going back into the room and to reliving the things together in a cinema it's because it's when you go in and come out where you can discuss all of these uh, opinions of those people living similar situations. Osa? Two other questions for our guests. Yeah, no, uh, your frame film is fantastic and no doubt it tackles really big, important questions and issues and themes. And one of them is feminine solidarity. And I was just wondering, you know, what is your take on that? What does that mean for you? Either of you can take it away. <laughs> hmm. uh, do you want to go ahead, Tatiana? No, no, I can answer after. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Um, like, um, you know, I, um, I think uh, for me that term echoes like uh, also um, like feminine solidarity. I could even like transpose it to like feminist solidarity and like um, I think um, uh, like some of, some of the like most fundamental principles of like of feminism for me feel like an an analysis of power, um, how power flows in a space, and I mean like I think it's and. I think one of one of the ways, you know, to like um destabilize power structures that like um uh push down on people, you know, or lift only a few up is like to name also name like what's going on in a space. And I think when I when I think about so like um you know, like I have to name that, you know, I'm not formally a caregiver you know uh neither is tatiana we're like we're artists and um like uh with certain accesses and that positions i think um us in a certain way and um like in in relating to the people we interviewed and and spoke to and um and even the audience like who are watching the film like I think it's important to name that, to name that like um like in ideal circumstances, um like caregivers have the resources to themselves tell their story, you know, not mediated through other people. Um and um that like also, I mean, if we also we'll go we'll go a step further, I mean the NFB is an institution that has like public funding, like it's everyone paying taxes into. Um and so that's it's a public good you know and it's like i what, what's, what's the point i'm making i'm just kind of trying to like map the territory here like um like and um it's like in a sense um the only way to or like one important way to look at this film is like okay that is a public good that belongs to everyone and it and it mostly belongs to the caregivers whose stories are told here and so like um in that case what what does the film do what what can it do like how was it made i think i think about the film a lot in those terms um and like and i think about how i would do another a similar project and like um like how how then um like what are ways that that could kind of more um um that could <laughs> rectify like the power imbalances in in the structure of filmmaking and i think that opens up a huge question around like um like if if maybe we could call it like um feminist filmmaking or research methods right like um like how how can we make films um in ways that like give people who feature in those films if they aren't the filmmaker themselves you know like um shape the narrative as as closely as possible as much as possible and also enjoy the benefits of that film being made you know so those 
that's like an open-ended question. It's kind of, it's something that's um I've been thinking about. Um I don't have answers to. I'm just sort of those are like that's um a, a thought process that um I I want to continue and like uh with other with other people, with other filmmakers, with other with other folks. Like um so that's well said, and I really have nothing uh, to add to this because that's truly it. Because what I, how I feel about a f a female solidarity is that, uh, as we were saying for so for those people that wor work in health, uh, we share the fact that they are people that are very much discriminated against because they're racialized. So they there's discrimination because of their color also and so uh, for solidarity i think we need to share a common experience and shed light on it so the, the light is just a film but uh, i would just restrict myself to that i want to use my experience or my means of the uh, fact that i was able to make a film with a very important institution to talk about these women that did not have that voice to, to, to be heard that's how I'm seeing uh, uh, women's solidarity. So to try and encourage that voice, it's I get the, the lift up uh, thought in my mind. Thank you for that. Since the pandemic happened, you know, everybody was just something very new for everybody. We can see our grandparents and can do many things, and we were very restricted in different ways and. I can't imagine creating a piece of art, uh, like a film during that time with all the lockdown restrictions and so on and so forth. Even as recently as last week, according to the World Health Organization, we're still in a state of an emergency with COVID. So what was your state of mind when you were making a film in a pandemic that we were all experiencing for the first this generation at least anyway for the first time and not knowing how to cope and how to maneuver yourself and go about projects and so on and so forth you know were you hopeful were you did you feel a sense of urgency what was that mindset for you what was that experience like um, if i may answer i think my state of mind was yes serious uh, and it was important what was happening but i have to acknowledge that i'm always uh, pretty much in a survival mode it's the first pandemic yes that i was encountering but the fact of being a black woman in this world i need i have to say that i'm always in a, in a emergency mode it was just livening up my uh feeling of uh, being powerless solitude uh um and being angry also and so we knew that these women were there and were being discriminated against so it just shed light on it and it, it made me angry and it put me in a state of emergency but i was always in that state and i think the pandemic just stopped everything and i said this is now before that i, I would have continued carrying on with my life but like because everything was stopped for once almost everyone was at the same level same pace and as i said okay it's not true that now that everything is stopped that i'm not going to do anything that i'm not going to take advantage of this time to talk to have a voice and to take this further and before that film i might have been sort of demor demoralized and uh, and when i when i met with those two women i was full, i became full of hope not because it, you were, the life is beautiful and everything is hunky dory but because i was able to uh, with my voice, take my stone to the, the building and uh, I think I can share, I can help, I can give a voice, I can say what's happening. So fun, finally the pandemic told me that it was, I was able to take my space, occupy my space and, my, and use my voice. I always appreciate your um, light, you I always appreciate your light. You always have that optimism. And it really lifts me up. I know that sometimes I'm a bit, I'm drawn to the going down. Yeah, so we are, there's a true complementarity. I think for me, like, definitely working on this film, especially with Tatiana, I was like, 
it's such a like healing like you know um i i think i felt the panic like not seeing my parents in months uh worrying about them worrying about my um yeah you know the worrying about the world you know worrying just um and um being able to to kind of sublimate the fear the worry the like um like <clears throat> the instability into something and like um keep working on it with someone especially with someone i think um like uh and share and like um you know and give i think it, like it was uh, i think the process of working on this film um like uh helped me immensely in terms of coping you know um i think um it's true like that um you know going outside of yourself mm, being in your body but like going you know observing the world or like participating in other in other people um like owning that we all collectively hold an experience in the world and and like participating i think yeah felt um very relieving especially i mean i think about like if you read into what government policy translated to socially it was like isolation right like um and okay that's that's one of the circumstances of like a pandemic but i i just think that um the the um the imposition that that everybody had to kind of um like curl into themselves into their own like family pod and and forget like the ways in which we're connected like i think um it was nice to break that through through filmmaking through talking to people i mean and if you what is filmmaking it's talking to people observing being accountable uh you know uh like uh trying to synthesize beauty in, in like um in your circumstances like so i th i think being in those actions and those gestures really were were so uh life saving i think um yeah thank you for that i'll hand it over back to magali thank you thank you assas merci tatiana merci valerie Thank Thank you, Tatiana and Valerie, but exactly, you talked about uh, how the protocols and the rules of the various governments and institutions during the pandemics brought us to reinvent ourselves and adjust. So was created within the project of the curb, which is uh, um, a hand a handout towards the uh, filmmakers to get out of this shell and invite you to create and to continue creating according to the standards that were implemented and and that you shared but now that we are still yes according to the state COVID is still with us but there's a sort of like a return back to normal the uh, what's hap what what's happening uh, it, it, that's ca caused you to create and talk uh, has not really changed. So you're still the sons, those people that give the first care. We're t still talking about immigration. We're always talking about better conditions. Uh, so the news is still talking to us. Does that mean that you want to say more, create further? Or just to say that we are creating, we are sharing a soul and it it's, will be there forever. Well, the both. I am sharing it more and more. And I surprised myself last week saying, well, I think that I'm not sharing enough uh, from 2020 to now. I think it's still relevant, but to hear that woman's voice is that much more relevant. It has not changed today. And I think that we could have shot that film yesterday. It, things have not changed at all in terms of immigration and health care, in terms of women. It's as if we were still going back in time. So I think it's that much more relevant that to share it. And as I was saying, after this film and since that film, 
I've become a person that uh, assumes being politicized because I felt that as an actress, not to get into trouble, uh, I needed to have a front type of thing. And I'm realizing that it's the opposite. I'm uh, an assumed activist and it's wonderful that I've met Valerie and those two women and all of this really uh, troubled me and I felt powerless and I wanted to talk about their reality so it could go further. So I said, well, this is art. What was I doing before that? And it's true. I was wondering what I was doing before that. And since then, it's really transformed me. It's healed me a lot, but I'm that much more revolted. So for as long as it will not change, I will not stop. I was thinking about Tatiana. I was absorbing it, what she's just said, Tatiana. It's true, I agree. We are in the same, same state, uh, add to that the recession. Wow, it's, and it's cyclical as well. When we enter capitalism, resulting from colonialism and all, it's still pressing me to carry on with this uh, radicalized, uh, radicalizing process. I think the standardizing of what causes anxiety. <laughs> Um, if I think about the way that daily news interpret, it's as if you are being rocked. You need to get used to the status quo and there's fluctuations between the interest rates going climbing and then they're going to come back down in November. And I feel like it's it's like an attempt to get people used to misery and it gives me the urge to get out of that life and to sort of shake shake myself and shake people out of this I think a lot about all the art that's being produced in all disciplines today uh, in this country, this territory, and I often wonder if we are talking about the fact that we are living in um, an economic system that is really unequal and that's cruel and we're living on a land where there was there's been an unassumed genocide the creation that can be that can be done here is it too dangerous for the status quo I'm thinking of it with Chansika uh, an Asian author that came to New York and she uh, wrote a book that's called Create Dangerously and she talks a great deal about artistic production that cannot or threatens the status quo. And I'm thinking of the fact that the state, the Canadian government positions itself as uh, being uh, well, doing well and helping arts, but is there something in there? Are there things that we can do and that would not be funded and that would be too much of a threat for the state? I wonder about this a lot. 
en me posant cette question, c'est comme si... And as I wonder about this, it's as if I'm sort of dissatisfied of what I'm doing or what's being done. Um, where is that dangerous zone in what we're doing? Does it exist? Continue à produire un peu comme... Or do we continue to sort of produce like a, a, a century from now, if we look back at what's being produced at this time, would we observe that it sort of supported the status quo? Is there something in there that was conciliant or... Yeah. I'm sort of researching, seeking... And it's not to make myself feel guilty or others feel guilty, but rather to try and, and trust myself with respect to what we're, we're doing. It's what you're sharing with us is so rich, Valérie. And I'd like to make a parallel from last February. We had a hybrid panel at the, the NFP with some uh, directors that, that had created with us. Georges Camarotti, who wrote uh, at La Cic, and uh, and he said exactly, this is why I'm linking this to what you, you just said. He's saying, now I'm bringing myself to create and pick themes that make me uncomfortable within myself, that are a cha challenge for myself. Because if I stay in the comfort zone, it's to stay in the, what's comfortable and the status quo. So what you shared with us today, I'd really like to make the parallel with what George said. And, and he said, Usman and others have allowed to create works that have responded like that. So that's why Saul is being shared today, because it really is a good reflection of what's happening today. So today's reality. So it's essential for people who want to speak up, no matter what art is being used to express oneself. Tatiana, did you want to have something? No, really, I was totally absorbed with what she was being, she was saying, because I also wonder, Gwiti, I'm in a theater, uh, and what we do in theater, it's more, we have more freedom to be able to write an, a work. And at this time, I'm wondering, I'm not writing because what I have to say, it does not make me uncomfortable. It does not change the status quo or the comfort in which I am. It's as if I would have had a flow that's ongoing. And uh, as it says in Saul, it needs to say more. I need to talk about uh, news and it needs to be uncomfortable. And that since 98 in Congo, it, there's been war and women are, are there and it, they're not, it's not being discussed and and it, we, we, we I need to talk about this type of thing. I saw I've gone to a different stage, but it takes time and courage. Valérie, I must say like Tatiana, I went to your play in 2021 in the fall. You had written a super yes. No, but so we need to talk about this, the wonder of what you did. You got together uh, black women from all over the place from that had different paths. And, and the texts were like a super synthesis of the artistic production over many years of many voices. And it was so beautiful. And you must mention that the after with everyone on the table, it was really a great moment. You opened up a portal, you created a space that was incredible. And I just want to shed light on the fact that you are doing, everything that you are doing is based on something very deep. And you shouldn't set that aside. I thank you for telling me. I, I'm, I'll accept it. Thank you. Merci thank you so much. Osas? It's fascinating. It's so rich what you're sharing with us today. Osas? Absolutely beautiful to see. And 
I love your zest, the both of you, for to continue the work that you do in ways that pushes you, uh, ways that push you outside of your boundaries. And like Tatiana, you said earlier, um, it sounds like you know you've you you've got a voice from creating soul and you want to do more, whether that voice gives you uh, that freedom to stand a little stronger and taller for immigrants or, and for uh, uh, healthcare providers. And like you said, Valerie too, uh, you know, really pushing yourself and, and go farther and further outside of that boundary. So it really begs the question, uh, what can we expect to see from the both of you, whether, you know, more work collaboration from this energy that I'm just, you know, loving today. Uh, whether, what else are you also working on individually with other artists and creators? What's going on in the works for you? Je lance dans l'univers qu'on va retravailler ensemble avec Val. I am Je sure that uh, I see it in the universe that we'll work together again with uh, uh, with you. It would be wonderful. Thank you, with Valérie. Yes, it would be wonderful for sure. So go ahead, Val. I know that you want to talk. To I also uh, want to throw in the universe that we will collaborate again. And yes, I'd like to collaborate. Um, drôle, on a comme, on a toutes les deux des, it's des... weird. We have respective practices outside of cinema, the cinema world, the both of us. Not in writing and theater, and for me in, in, in writing as well. Je sens toujours cette... And it's much more subtle, but the isolation from the pandemic is remaining. Uh, it's still there in terms of a setting. So I would really like us to work together again. Uh, but I was going to say that uh, Val has come up with a book that's called Les Enragés, or The Mad People. Uh, it's uh, the what we continue to do. So I recommend this to everyone. To, it's won a prize. And that's what was, and I devoured it. She said not to read it at Christmas. It wasn't uh, for that time, but I loved it. I I just went through it like crazy. So we are carrying on. I think it's extremely politicized, that book. So I recommend it highly. And for the time being, it's a lot in theater. This is where I find my voice. It's, it's going to be much more documentary theater. And what I've discovered with that, I think that I managed to relate what I want to from my perspective. And it's a bit more of the truth on myself. So it will be in theater. And I, hopefully in cinema as well with uh, Val. But we'll talk a bit more about love this time, this other time. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, so now everybody knows to look out for your works in <laughs> that's film related or outside of that boundary so that's really good good to know it's exciting stuff congrats on all of those achievements and what your other projects that you have coming on thank you thanks I appreciate uh, this conversation osas and magali um, and tatiana uh always uh like very grounding to talk to like black women. Uh, so. Thank you. Grounding and empower, empowering, if I may say, ça donne cette énergie que vous avez ressenti en This comme... energy that you felt as you conveyed your thoughts to create soul, your emotions, we live it as we are part of this conversation. And we talk about light process to get out of the dark, a creation process. How is it about your succession? You found one another. You are hoping you threw this in the universe to work together again. Tatiana, you had a, you created a play where you uh, found many uh, levels of culture, ages, and wealth. What about the succession, the youth voice? What are you doing for the next generation? that has no shyness about uh, being extremely vocal and being politicized. Do, are you interested or do you have a wish for them? As I, I say, always uh, 
come and talk to me. They're nice. They're inspiring. They're honest. They're they're uh, direct uh, and they're politicized and they're comfortable. And it, to about fun find uh, funding, they go and seek and fund. They're incredible. They have no trouble going through doors. They're elsewhere, and that talks about the de decolonizing of the systems and the uh, funding organizations. These young, these youth find all kinds of uh, currents for the uh, traditional channels, but also they create new resources. Yes, and they are not afraid of naming things. If they name things, they name the word colonizing. They say there's only one black person in the position. And so they name things, they call on things much louder uh, because I teach uh, uh, students at the Ecole Nationale de Théâtre and Theatre School, and they don't really need us. They are doing really well by themselves. It's a nice observation, Valérie, on your side. I agree. And I think that if I had a wish, there's a lot of softness. We often talk of creation, of the fact as a fact to create a room and struggle. But what I would like, what I would have appreciated 10 years ago, would have been um, spaces where you could be restful and reflect softly to what I want to do quietly. It's like I feel the question of reshuffling the creation spaces, uh, refreshing them. Ideally, we would require more space. Where people can stay anchored in themselves, in their process, in their community, rather than doing things at a scale that requires going fast or strong and to get tired out, get puckered out. So I wish a lot of, a lot of slowness and quietness to the new generation. Those are ingredients of freedom because we live in a capitalist world and in the artistic environment, they're asking them to go fast and to get tired out and to fill out for stuff for grants. And it's very tough. Yes. It's a nice wish. Sorry, you were going to invite something that I'll let, allow you to carry on. So, Tatiana, I'm inviting you to talk. <laughs> Concretely. Yes, we were often, I have four children, so we are reiterating what our parents taught us. So what's happening afterwards, the school, etc., step after step. And with the new generation, they're so connected. They live in the world where everything is so much faster than the one where we live in our youth. So this wish, Valérie, to go slower and to take the time to reflect and to be mistaken and to create, it's a wonderful wish that probably will enable, hopefully, creating a balance that we've lost in the way we used to play outside and get, we were wondered uh, uh, with the sky. And so 
if we if we have that balance and take the time and go slower we can have more balance and create and perhaps find uh, some space at, in at nfb where we can think and uh, with the new generation yes i wish for the new generation i'd say be mistaken make mistakes I hope they will go there. I wish it to them. So what would that mean? Well, I don't think that you make mistakes when you do it with your heart, but I do it with them. You should do it with them, not for their performance, not to get grants. If They should do it for them. So this is an advice that you would give to a 16-year-old if you were to cross them on the corner of the street. You'd say, make a mistake, be mistaken. Well, no, I'm not really good with advice, but I hope not to make mistakes necessarily, but to dare more, to do things that are different and disturb. To dare, perhaps it's not be mistaken, but to dare, to be daring. But I think it's to say what I don't need to say, because what, from what I'm seeing with the up-and-coming generation, they are daring. And you feel that since you've been an actor on various platforms in works uh, uh, in this, on the cinema in theater and you uh, you are, are often there in theater as a person you think that your path has changed as a creator since day one and we're all evolved but your conviction is it still the same stronger or completely lit up and supported by another source of motivation. I think it's stronger because there's something uh, uh, as, that's a wealth of working with the new people. There's, they have a flame and energy, but then I've changed a great deal, a lot. I'm less na naive, I'm more politicized, as I was saying, and there's a past. So I think the flame comes from the fact that today I know so that flame is keeping me alive. Before the pandemic, it would used to demoralize me. I didn't know how to get my head out of the water, but I now feel that I have the capacities and the voice, I'm, and I'm thrilled. And, and we're no longer alone. I have my ancestors, and I have, so since I graduated 12 years ago, we, there were five of us, and today there's 34. And 34 is nothing. There's a lot of people. And that's just the people that are talking and playing to different things. So yes, of course, it's changed. There's still that community, but it's more visible and it's vocal. So it's good. Thank you. Valérie? I think she froze. So it takes us, we're already at the end of this hour with a few questions. It was a meeting of so rich. Yes, it's nice what you said. Yes. Thank you. And it concludes our conversation for the noon hour. So thank you very much. Do not miss next week. It's with you as well. Yes, it is. But before that, Valerie, it was absolutely beautiful and lovely to see you again and um, and continue the great work that you're doing. And Tatiana, it's lovely to meet you. Thank you for joining us today and to be in this space with you. It's just uh, you're phenomenal. Yes, next week is going to be, um, yeah, the next panel session with Cheryl Fogel, who is the director of uh, John Ware Reclaimed. Um, very close to my heart because I used to live in Edmonton, spent 12 and a half years there. So I will be chatting with her next week on that project and her creative process as well. So come back for that. Merci beaucoup, Ossas. Alors, oui, Thank you very much, Ossas. So, 
on uh, nfb.ca, you'll have the film. So on the traces of John Weir, and uh, of course, we invite you to uh, see Saul on nfb.ca. The film is available on the platforms. Thank you very much. And at see, uh, let's see one another next week. And we'll stay in contact, stay in touch. Thank you, all of you. Bye-bye.